Welcome parishioners, visitors, and guests to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish Family on this, the third Sunday of Ad Advent, Gaudete Sunday. Again, we hear from John the Baptist as a messenger who prepares us for the coming of the Messiah, Jesus. Today, there will be a second collection for the retired religious. Please be generous. Rejoicing in the Lord, we are all invited to sing number 38, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We come together for the third Sunday of Advent, and as you see, the light is getting through the purple, and it becomes rose. So we celebrate Sunday Gaudete. And in the Gospel, John the Baptist sent, uh, sends out his disciples to Jesus to see if he is the one to come. And Jesus tells them, tell John what you see and what you hear. Jesus does great things and the sign speaks for themselves. Jesus makes the blind see and the cripple can walk again. So he is merciful and loving. As we come together to celebrate Eucharist, let us call to mind our shortcomings and our failures and lean upon his love and his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. O 
O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult, the steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication and with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness, Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come? Or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out? to the desert to see, a reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. In the seminary where I was, we used to evaluate our progression twice a year. Alternating, we had conversations with the rector and the vice rector. The meetings with the vice rector were pretty predictable. Usually, he went through a long checklist with all kinds of points he wanted to talk about. Every year it was the same list and you could tell what the topics would be. What I 
remember in particular from these meetings is that they were very long and annoying. <laughs> the meetings with the rector were much more exciting. After he let us speak about our progression and issues, he told us what he saw. Without any checklist, he usually addressed exactly what he observed. Even though the purpose was to help you to grow, it could be tough sometimes. The rector was a good observer, and even though he was pretty shy, he told you in about a half an hour exactly what the issues were. This is what I see, was usually the introduction of a pretty sharp observation. Tell them what you see. That is what Jesus says to the disciples of John the Baptist after they come to him and ask him if he is the one to come. Jesus doesn't say about himself, yes, I am the one to come, but he invites them to share what they see and what they hear. This is already an early invitation from Jesus to John's disciples to become witnesses of faith. More signs are to come. This is just the beginning. John's disciples understand that Jesus is the one to come. The signs speak for themselves. The blind can see, the lame walk, Lepers are cleansed, deaf hear, and dead are raised. These signs introduce the messianic age. They know he is the Messiah they waited for. This is what prophets predicted about the coming of the Messiah. As Isaiah puts it in today's first reading, the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf will be cleared, and the lame leap like stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. The signs speak for themselves. And the gospel is an invitation to all of us to bring our lives in line with that gospel. How we live, and how we act should be in line with what we believe and in line with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Advent is a gift. It is a time of reflection. It is a time to invest more in our faith. It is a time of deepening our faith and growing closer to him. We look joyful forward to the coming of Emmanuel, what means God with us. This weekend we celebrate Gaudete. He is near. Light breaks to the darkness of the purple and it becomes rose. His coming is near and we look joyful forward to it. As a little child, the great God of Israel comes among us to share in our humanity, to share in our weakness, in our joys and in our worries. Let us take advantage of these last weeks of Advent by growing closer to him, bringing our life in line with our faith and sharing the good news. Let us be witnesses of faith and tell the world of the good, new, of the good news that we received. Tell them what you see and what you hear, says Jesus. 
Go out and be with witnesses of faith. Go out and tell the world what you have seen and what you have heard. That's what he says to us as well. Go out. Amen. Together we profess our faith and say the Nicene Creed on page 9 of the Breaking Bread book. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We open our hearts and pray to the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that she may bring good news to the poor, healing to the brokenhearted, and liberty to captives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, that they may heed the message of Christ and embrace the way of the gospel, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the handicapped, that the Lord may strengthen them by our assistance and make them firm through our support and concern, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the aged, the unemployed, and the ill, that the Lord may provide them with relief and encouragement, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to recognize the presence of Christ in the midst of all our activities, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially for Lynn Milheiser and for members of our Lord, Lady of Lords Parish family, that they may come to enjoy the vision of God face to face, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord, our God, Watchful, we look forward to your coming among us. We ask you to hear our prayers for Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As
As the altar is prepared and the gifts brought forth, please join in singing number 82, Lo, How a Rose Are Blooming, number 82. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, and the praise of the Lord and the same, for our good and all the church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, 
and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and the resurrection of your son who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring together with the glorious Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with Saint Bernadette and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, 
and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, especially Lynn Milheiser. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, but forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song is number 74, Bread of Life. We'll be singing the first two verses, number 74. Number 72, come Emmanuel.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a couple of announcements. Listening sessions will be held after all Masses this weekend for those who would like to offer feedback regarding the music ministry at Our Lady of Lourdes. We would appreciate your input as we work towards achieving our parish mission planning goal of attracting and engaging more people in the liturgy through diverse music. If you aren't able to attend and would like to share your ideas, Forms are available at the hospitality table in the gathering area or on our website under the Music Ministry tab. Our Lady of Lourdes Family Movie Night will be held on Monday, December 16th at 6 p.m. at the De Pere Cinema. Join us to watch the movie The Star. The event is free of charge. Our second annual Christmas caroling evening will be held tonight at 5.30 p.m. We will meet in the gathering area and do some caroling uh, in the neighborhood around the church. All are welcome. Jesus says to the disciples of John, tell what you see and hear. So we are also assigned to go in the world to tell and share what you have seen and what you have heard, the joy of our faith. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to serve the Lord and one another. As we go forth, please join in singing number 67, Every Valley.
Okay. Yep. And Mary's coming later, but she's going to be here. Mary's here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Carol wants to be here. Carol okay. Andrews said she's coming. Yep. So, so, so there's like uh, probably about 10 of you so Oh, far. wonderful. Well, That's I'm good. thinking there'll be more just because we're coming. This was brother. Yeah. Well, and, and it's, she's in a music ministry. Correct. So, Correct. Uh, people coming from the Lord's Choir. Okay. And I put it out to the whole music ministry. Thanks for